Hey, welcome back. Uh, this is, I think, um, episode two in Super Basics with Open Frameworks. We're looking at creative coding. Last week, we downloaded Open Frameworks. We got it running. We compiled. We built a first project that didn't do anything interesting at all. This week, we're making our first projects and starting to look at interactive drawing with creative coding, C++, and Open Frameworks. We have looked at all kinds of creative coding, talking about programming for artists, did a lot of drawing, a lot of discussion, looked at some simple C++, and now we're using Open Frameworks. Last week we downloaded Open Frameworks. This week we're going to build our first project and try out some drawing. Depending upon what version of Open Frameworks you're downloading, you will have a way to make basic projects. We looked last week at the structure of basic projects in the apps, my apps folder, and we made an example. And the example that we looked at had a source code folder with our three files that we were interested in, our main CPP, our OF app CPP, and our OF app H. So we have a header file that defines all the things our program will do, then a C++ file that defines how it does those things, and then a main file main files, uh, main CPP that handles uh, open frameworks, launches a framework that we run our, our programs inside. Now, if I want to make new projects, what I can do is uh, I can take the empty example that open frameworks comes with, duplicate it, run it again, and make versions of it. On Mac and on Windows, we have this handy project generator, which lives in the project generator folder. And this is great for making copies of folders, uh, uh, copies of projects or making completely new projects. And the simplest thing that we can do is use it to make a brand new project. We don't actually need to, but it saves us a little bit of time. And what it does is it makes a folder with empty source files in according to a template for our platform, Mac, Windows, Linux puts in um, a couple of other things like which add-ons are going to be included and makes a project file for either Visual Studio Code, uh, Visual Studio, or in our instance on Mac uh, in Xcode. So I've launched the project generator and it allows me to if I put this to verbose and advanced options allows me to update individual projects or create or update um, multiple projects what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new project here called my sketch. I could call this a example sketch, and then I can choose where I want that to be saved. Usually, you'll put it in the developer folder or wherever you're working in the OF folder inside apps, inside my apps. If I want to include add-ons to extend the things that I'm able to do, the drop-down here will scan through the add-ons folder and see what additional libraries of code have we made available. And these are some of the standard ones that come with open frameworks to include uh, scalable vector graphics, to include XML settings, to include a GUI, to talk to connect sensor, etc. And we can find and download more. We can also choose the platforms that we want to build for. In this instance, I want to build code for OS X on Macintosh, but I could build for Windows or Linux. And if I want to use a particular template, I can also choose that there. These are available because I've decided I wanted to use the advanced options. And if I just go to standard, you'll see it simplifies the choices. What platform do I want to build on? What add-ons do I want to use? Where do I want to save the project? And if I click Generate, You'll see in the background, the window changed, and inside my apps, my apps folder, here is my example sketch. And if I open it up, you can see it's made me an empty add-ons folder, uh, file, an empty bin file where my binary executable will be built, a config file, which explains to Clang, the C++ compiler, how to make this, and my source code. What I can also do is I could go to old sketches and click import, tell it where to import the code from, and it'll copy 
that code into a new project if I choose a new project or alternatively if I choose the same directory it'll update the code settings in there for Xcode project to whatever the latest version is. So this is really helpful if I get partial code maybe that somebody has written for Windows but should run on Mac but I don't have a complete project and not quite sure what things go where I can use their code and say please update this adding in a, an Xcode project file and a build file etc for my platform so that can be really helpful if I'm trying to work with examples that maybe come with uh, an add-on that somebody else has built in this example we've built our first empty sketch and if I open this up this is going to launch Xcode for me automatically and I can see down at the side here is my empty sketch and here is my source code folder and I want to quickly talk about what we have in here so the main file describes a window that's going to be made and it's going to make a, an OpenGL window so open graphics library window of a certain width and height and it's going to launch it as a window but I can say OF full screen there's a command in there that allow me to launch it automatically full screen and then it says start running an OF app and in my header file you can see this is the OF app class and inside it there's a load of things that are standard the OF app knows how to do so this is all the framework for open frameworks and helpfully the template for making a new project comes with a load of functions already defined I don't need to use them if I don't want next time we're going to look at how you can edit your own templates to make this start up the way that you like so if there are common commands or functions that you want to use we'll show you how to add that in including personalized comments and so on but here it starts and the three main important ones are setup update and draw that do basically that the setup runs once when you start your program so any things that you need to initialize and set up you can put in there update runs and runs and runs in the background checking what's going on with the system and if you need to maybe grab files or new images from a camera something like that put it in update and when you want to draw things the main area where stuff happens in your program you put it in the draw loop there's also these additional functions, some of which are listeners listening for things in the system to say, has a key been pressed? Has the mouse been moved? Has the window been resized, etc. And we may use these, we may not. You'll see a lot of the examples for open frameworks will keep these as standard because it comes standard in the template. But if you're not using them, you can get rid of them. I'm going to leave them for now because the next video I'm going to look at customizing the templates and we will alter them there. But for now, we'll leave them in. If I look in my CPP file, I can see all of these functions having been defined and now included in my CPP file, but they don't do anything. And the simplest thing that I can do, if I compile this file and it runs, it builds me a window, which I can see here doesn't do anything at all. So the first thing that I want to do is explore some of the drawing controls. So in void OF app draw, it's a routine that's just going to keep running at whatever frame rate I specify. In this case, it's going to go as fast as it can, but I can set it to be 30 frames a second or 60 frames a second. And I can say OF draw circle. And helpfully Xcode is coming in and saying, I know how to do some of these things. And I can specify an X point, such as 100, and a Y point, 100, so 100 across and 100 down on my screen, and then a radius of 50, semicolon at the end, and run it. And it will compile, and it draws to screen. So I'm able to draw simple things, and the range of different things that I can draw include drawing rectangles, add a position with a width and a height, drawing ellipses again, 
uh, at an X and Y position with a width and a height. And a number of other basic primitives. Walk through the documentation and you can see how they're drawn. They all need an X point and a Y point and they get a width and a height. And these things, I can supply the arguments dynamically if I want to by calling other basic commands. And there's a bunch of things that I can find out as well. So if I wanted, for instance, to draw the circle in the middle of the screen, there's a function that I can ask for, which is OF get width. OF get width, which gets me the width of the currently running window that Open Frameworks is using. And then I can get OF get height and that will go off and ask and return me the width of the window and the height of the window. What I actually want to do is find out where the middle of the window is. So if I get the width and divide it by two, get the height and divide it by two, and I'm just going to comment out using two slashes these other drawing commands. That'll draw me a circle in the middle of the screen. Well, in the middle of my window to be more precise. What I've actually done is, rather than getting the width, of the, sorry, the height of the window, I've got the height of the screen. So it's actually dividing the whole width of my screen. So let me debug that. OF get height divided by two. And that should now draw me the middle of my Open Frameworks window. There it is. And as I change the size of the window by dragging, you'll see it'll redraw my dot dynamically at the middle of the window. What I can also do is set different attributes about how I'm going to draw. And I can switch these on and off, and I can also set them dynamically. The simplest is to say whether I want objects to be filled using the OF fill command or OF no fill. So in this instance, I've said no fill. So it'll draw that circle without a fill in the middle. So it'll be just a circle outline like so. And I can alternate between. So I could say OF no fill and draw a circle. And then later on in my code, I can say OF fill to switch it on and draw another circle with it filled. And I can change these dynamically using that command. Then what I can also do is I can set the color that I'm currently drawing in. And this is generally done with RGB, red, green, and blue value, which goes from 0 to 255, 256 shades of red and green and blue. We can use CSV, which I'm going to do in a later video, which is a different color space, which can be really useful because you can say, I want colors of a fixed saturation or a fixed intensity or a fixed brightness, and then have complementary color palettes, which is a little bit more difficult to do in an RGB space. But we'll go through that when we look at color. So I can set a color value. Say I want bright red. It's 255. It's all the red. No green, no blue. And that will now set my color and draw me a red outline circle at the middle of the screen like so. So we've done the basics of super simple drawing and have a play with different kinds of colors, different kinds of fills. And also notice that if I know I want to do this for my whole application, I could actually cut these instructions and put them into setup. So when I do my setup, I say no fill and particularly a set color which means that now in my draw loop, there's only one command that's being executed. Rather than every time I run the draw loop, set the fill and set the color to be the same thing again, 
I actually move those commands out so I'm executing less commands. So effectively my code is just that little bit quicker and it's easier to see and easier to understand. Those are some basic drawing patterns. What I can also do is start to put them inside loops, make them respond to things like mouse position. In this instance, if I say, instead of getting me the height, I could say OF get mouse X or mouse Y position. So if I get the mouse Y position, and I'm asking the program, go off and find out where the X position, or sorry, the Y position of my mouse is, and set my dot to that. But because I've set the width, uh, the, the, the X position across, just to be the width, now when I move my mouse up and down, it's only obeying the vertical position of the mouse and not the, y posi the horizontal position of the mouse. So I've got interactivity straight away. And if I comment out my no fill, and I'm going to make this add a hundred of blue, so I'm going to have a bit of a purpley color in my setup color. You'll see this even more clearly. Oh, no. Red and that much blue gives me an orangey color. So I've now got simple interactivity drawing to the screen with all of these different shapes. So that's a really fast introduction to using the project generator and drawing my first things to screen and finding out that I can use Open Frameworks commands to get some idea about the environment, the width and the height of the window that I'm working in, the X and the Y position of the mouse. Next time, I'm going to delve a little bit more deeply into doing some more drawing, show you some cool tricks for making gen really super simple generative drawings using loops. And then we're going to also customize some of the templates and move on to doing more complicated things. So if you're interested, drop me some comments. Let me know what you'd like to see. Uh, let me know any questions. You can also drop into the openframeworks.cc forum. Ask questions there in the beginners. It's a fantastic community. Hit the subscribe button and I will see you next time on another video. Thanks very much.